Let me tell you something you already know. I'm Dave Kirloff, languageofhitting.com. I want to talk to you about the diagnosis of your hitting problem. Allow me to clarify something when I use the phrase hitting problem. A hitting problem is something where the hitter is hitting pop-ups, is hitting ground too many ground balls, is striking out. That's a hitting problem. A hitting issue is not because your batting average is low. You're hitting hard line drives, you're hitting hard balls right at fielders, and you're getting out. That's not a hitting problem. That's just a, a rut. But a hitting problem is when you're not squaring up the ball frequency and with consistency. So I want to take a sensible look into diagnosing your hitting problem. Okay, so let's look at hitting from the, the perspective of the pitching coach and the pitcher. The pitching coach goes to the pitcher and says, get that batter out. I don't care if you get him to pop up, you get him to ground out, or even better, you get him to strike out. Just get that batter out. Next, the pitching coach tells the pitcher, this is how you're gonna get the batter out. Mess up the hitter's timing. Throw one fast and then throw one slow. Mess up the hitter's spatial awareness skills. Don't keep throwing the ball in the same place. Throw it high, throw it low. Throw it inside, then throw it outside. That's pretty cut and dry, pretty basic. Mess up the batter's timing, mess up the batter's spatial awareness skills. I don't really recall too many instances where the pitching coach told the pitcher, mess up the hitter's mechanics. Now, from the batter's perspective, how do I counter the pitcher's weapons? How do I thwart his plans? What can I do as a, as a hitter to not allow the pitcher to mess up my timing? What else can I do as a batter to not allow the, the pitcher to mess up my spatial awareness skill? Here it is. Pay more attention to the ball. That sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Just pay more attention to the ball. Uh, is that about it, Dave? Just pay more attention to the ball? I mean, anybody can say that, but here's the difference. Unfold it. What does it mean to pay more attention to the ball and how do I do it? Let me give you some language, some words that I use to help to describe this to the players. Examine the ball. Study the ball. When you examine something, it's not carelessly. It's not whimsically. It's not just a glance and look away. When you study something, it's a hard look into, into the object. Where is the object? Where is the object going? When you study something, you put more attention on what you're looking at. You're not as distracted uh, from an outside external um, event that's taking place while you're studying something. You're, you're not disrupted. When you examine something and you study something, you push away the distractions, like parents, scouts, girlfriends, runners on base, that's all removed. The only thing you put your attention on is the ball. Well, that sounds pretty simple. Why do I need you? Why do I need your hitting system? And if all I gotta do is pay more attention to the ball, right? And again, this is where you begin to unfold it. You see, what my hitting system does is it helps the, the beginning hitter. It helps the average hitter. It helps the advanced hitter. Someone who's playing professional baseball already. Who's playing college baseball. So when I get these questions, well, uh, my son's already in high school, my son's in college. Is this system beneath his level? No. Let me say that again, emphatically, this is not below your level. When you start with the best hitting drill ever, video series three and four, the hitter learns how to specifically pay attention to the ball in a particular area that's near home plate. And believe me, every time I do a, a baseball lessons and I, tra I travel to these traveling tour clinics, this is where I begin. It's not as basic as it sounds. 
there's a lot of unfolding, a lot of layers that goes into studying and examining the ball while it's in the home plate area. And I tell players this all the time, you cannot afford to make a mistake in this area. When it comes to your vision, it comes to your timing, and it comes to your spatial awareness skills. Once you master this idea of, of paying more attention to the ball in the home plate area, then you move out to something that's even deeper. And then how to pay more attention to the ball at the beginning of the event that we call hitting, when the ball is out near the pitcher. In the world's greatest hitting formula, I explain with great detail something I call the pitcher's common denominator. How do I examine the ball when the ball is in the pitching mound area, when the ball is in the pitcher's hand? How do I study it? That's where the, the cornerstone to timing is the pitcher's common denominator. Now, I use the pitcher's common denominator to help me to organize and master my timing at home plate. And once I, it, I master my timing, then I can begin to master my spatial awareness skill. And please make note, the pitcher's release point is not the pitcher's common denominator. Remember, I don't ever recall hearing too many times in my life the pitching coach tell the, the pitcher, mess up the hitter's mechanics. We hear him say, mess up the hitter's timing. Let me conclude the diagnosis of the hitting problem with this um, concept. What side of the fence are you on? Swing as hard as you can. Hit the ball hard. Or don't swing as hard. Just square it up. See, in these 26 years of research and studying in the topic of hitting, most people are probably on the side of, of the field that says, you know what? Swing the bat as hard as you can. There are very few people and players who tell us, I don't swing as hard as I can. I just try to square it up. So here's my observations. For the people who, or hitters are successful and they tell us in commentaries, you know what, I'm just trying to swing the bat as hard as I can. They already have good spatial awareness skills and they already have good timing skills. More times than not that I observe, the players who are trying to just swing the bat as hard as they can and they're failing is because they're getting disconnected in that moment they're swinging as hard as they can. Their timing is off, and when you swing as hard as you can, you actually, there's a flinch that goes on, and you lose the depth perception of the ball for a split second. And discover this, all you gotta do is watch the hitter's eyes. The eyes are the like the tunnel to the brain. Watch most of your players when they try to swing as hard as they can in a game, Look and see the disconnection between the ball and the hitter. The hitter's eyes will reveal the disconnection. Therefore, when I'm working with a hitter who is a beginner, who is an average hitter, or who's an advanced hitter, I prefer to teach the players how to not swing as hard as you can and to square it up. Because when you think about your timing and you think about your spatial awareness skills and you learn how to examine the ball and you learn how to study the ball more, you actually become more connected with the ball. The ball, the ball it feels like the ball is part of your body now. And you can control and manipulate the flight path a lot easier when you don't swing as hard as you can. Okay. Listen to the uh, broadcaster's um, exchange of words when... Had, they had an interview with uh, Robinson Cano about uh, Moncada and some advice that he gives Moncada as a young player. And I asked Cano about the strikeouts because clearly the strikeouts are up right now with Moncada. Cano didn't really have that issue early on in his career, but one thing he said is, and this is what he would say to Moncada about the strikeouts, is to keep the game simple. Don't swing so hard because then you find yourself chasing pitches. You want to make contact, use the whole field if you can. You do that, you end up minimizing the strikeouts. One thing he said, is, and this is what he would say to Mercado about the strikeouts, is to keep the game simple. Don't swing so hard. Don't swing so hard. Don't swing so hard. Don't swing so hard. 
because then you find yourself chasing pitches. When you don't swing so hard, it gives you a chance to pay more attention to the ball. Pay attention to the details of the ball. Check out the video series, the best hitting drill ever, and then after that, the world's greatest hitting formula. Your player's worth it. Make the investment. Let's help our kids to be as good as they can be while they're still young. I'm Dave Kirloff, languageofhitting.com. May the Lord bless you.